Here are this week's top stories. President Rodrigo Duterte has appointed Police Lieutenant General Camilo Cascolan as the new Philippine National Police Chief. Prior to his appointment, Cascolan was the Deputy Chief for Administration, the second highest position in the PNP. Cascolan replaces his Mista, Police General Archie Gamboa, who retired on September 2. The newly installed police chief only has two months to lead the PNP as he is set to retire in November unless the president extends his term. President Duterte also appointed former NBI Director Dante Geran as the new president of PhilHealth. Malacanang was quick to defend Geran's appointment saying that corruption is the main problem in PhilHealth. That is why the president thought the best person for the job is one with investigation skills. Meanwhile, the Senate Committee of the WHO recommended on Tuesday the filing of criminal charges against Health Secretary Francisco Duque III, former PhilHealth President and CEO Ricardo Morales, and several other officials over alleged anomalies within the state insurer. But Presidential Spokesperson Harry Roque said President Duterte will wait for the result of Task Force PhilHealth's investigation. I'm only one. Yes. Okay. Yes. No yes. Other, yes. No other one. Yes. Oops. Discover. I'm so sorry. The Department of Foreign Affairs on Thursday said a Filipino seaman is so far the lone survivor of the sinking of a cargo ship during a recent typhoon near Japan. The 45-year-old survivor said one of the ship's engines stalled. A big wave then overturned the ship, causing it to sink. Search and rescue is underway for the 38 Filipinos two New Zealanders, and two Australians who are still missing. The DFA Office of the Undersecretary for Migrant Workers Affairs and the Philippine Overseas Labor Office in Osaka are closely coordinating with local manpower agency Corporal Ship Management and Manning Corporation, which handled the Filipino seafarers' employment. The Japanese Coast Guard said Friday that they found an unresponsive man floating face down. The state-run United Coconut Planters Bank said it is working closely with the law enforcement agencies and the Banco Central ng Pilipinas to probe the reported cyber heist last June that cost it 167 million pesos. The bank assured its stakeholders and clients' funds were not affected by the incident and that security measures have since been implemented to avoid its recurrence. Earlier reports said the heist involved withdrawals from automated teller machines and online transfers perpetrated by African nationals and their Filipino accomplices. Students in face masks returned to class on Tuesday in Wuhan, the central Chinese city where the coronavirus first emerged late last year. Nearly 1.4 million students resumed classes at kindergartens, primary and middle schools across the city following the reopening of high schools in May. Official figures show that Wuhan accounted for 80% of China's more than 4,600 coronavirus-related deaths and was under a strict lockdown for more than two months from late January. China has not reported any new local transmissions of the coronavirus in recent days. 2018 Asian Games gold medalist Yuka Sasso clinched back-to-back -back wins in the 2020 Nitori Ladies Golf Tournament in Hokkaido Otaru Country Club on Sunday, August 30. Sasso won against Japanese golfer Sakura Koiwai by two strokes and fired a one under par 71 to back her second title in this tournament after conquering the NEC Karuizawa Championship two weeks ago where she scored a four-stroke victory worth the equivalent of 6.6 .6 million pesos. Sasso is also the first Filipino-Japanese and LPGA rookie to rule the tournament. Real and real-life couple Catherine Bernardo and Daniel Padilla led a tribute song of solidarity for media giant ABS-CBN's retrenched workers. Titled Tinig ng Mga Nawalan, the music video released Monday featured the network's reporters, anchors, celebrities, and employees who lost their jobs after ABS-CBN was denied a broadcast franchise in the House of Representatives. Several units were also closed down as a result of the network going off-air along with its regional stations and its sports unit. 
Vlogger Lloyd Cadena has passed away as announced on his official Facebook page on Friday. He was 26. The post did not detail the reason behind Cadena's death. Cadena is considered one of the most popular YouTube vloggers in the country. His YouTube channel has over 5.3 million subscribers. For more stories and updates, visit our website advocatesomi.com and check out our social media pages. This is Joshua Arimado for Advocates TV.